Number five. Our fifth and final myth we're going to debunk today. You can plan on withdrawing 4% of your nest egg annually in retirement. So that's been classically been the convention, right? The 4% rule was invented back in the, or initiated, instituted, whatever we want to call it, back in the mid-90s. And it basically states that if you begin by withdrawing 4% of your nest egg's value during year one of retirement, adjust subsequent withdrawals for inflation, your nest egg should conceivably last you for 30 years. And while I think it's a good baseline to follow, I don't necessarily think that we should be following it to the letter. And here's why. So back when that rule was established, first of all, we were in a very different interest rate environment when it came to bonds. And now we are not in that sort of environment. So basically, if you have a portfolio that's reasonably loaded with bonds, let's say anywhere from 40 to 60 percent bonds, which is the, rec the general recommendation, you're not going to be generating the same sort of income from those bonds as you were back then. And that's obviously going to to limit the extent to which you can withdraw that aggressively. The other thing is that the rule makes a lot of assumptions, right? It does assume a fairly even split of stocks and bonds, which not everybody has. Um, it assumes that you didn't retire on the really early side. People are living longer these days. You know, the Social Security Administration says that I think about 25% of 65 year olds today will live past 90. So if you retired at 55, which some people are doing, you know, all of a sudden you've got a little bit of a shortfall there if you start withdrawing at 4%. So I would say use it as a guideline, but be careful with it, you know? Yeah, that originally came out, as you pointed out, in a study in the mid-90s from Bill Bangan. And subsequent studies that it came out with, he actually moved it up to 4.5%. And he recently moderated a Reddit discussion and said, I still stand by 4.5%. But he recognizes and values the research from other folks from People like Wade Fow, who says, no, it really should be closer to like 3%, because right. like you said, right. very low interest rates, right. high stock valuations. So really, the bottom line is choose something that is within that range and be prepared to be flexible. Because right. the research, regardless of where you start, the research shows that one of the best things you can do is if the market does go down or you don't get from bonds what you were hoping, that you can cut back on your spending during those tough times right. and then wait until your portfolio recovers. If you can do that, whether you choose three, three and a half, four, four and a half is less important than your ability to cut back when the market is down.